Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. All thanks and praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may his peace and blessings upon his last and final messenger, his family, his companions, and those who follow them until the end of times. Welcome to lesson number 39 of Tafsirul Jalalain. Alhamdulillah, through the grace of mercy and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yesterday, we were able to cover verses 137 to 151 of Surah Ali Imran. So inshallah today we are going to start off right where we left off with verse number 152. So I don't have my student with me today. So I will recite from the tafsir. I will read the paragraph from the tafsir. After which I will then translate and comment. قال الإمام جلال الدين السيوطي رحمه الله تعالى ولقد صدقكم الله وعده إياكم بالنصر إذ تحسونهم تقتلونهم بإذنه بإرادته حتى إذا فشلتم جبنتم عن القتال وتنازعتم اختلفتم في الأمر أي أمر النبي بالمقام في سفح الجبل للرمي فقال بعضكم نذهب فقد نصر أصحابنا وبعدكم لا نخالف أمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعصيتم أمره فتركتم المركز لأجل الغنيمة من بعد ما أراكم الله ما تحبون من النصر وجواب إذا دل عليه ما قبله أي منعكم نصره منكم من يريد الدنيا فترك المركز للغنيمة ومنكم من يريد الآخرة فثبت به حتى قتل كعبد الله بن جبير وأصحابه ثم صرفكم عطف على جواب إذا المقدر ردكم بالهزيمة عنهم أي الكفار ليبتليكم ليمتحنكم فيظهر المخلص من غيره ولقد عفى عنكم مرتكبتموه والله ذو فضل على المؤمنين بالعفو So here in this verse, in verse number 152, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continuing with the topic of the battle of Uhud. And some of the lessons and reminders that are found in this event for the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهُ إِذْ تَحُسُّونَهُمْ بِإِذْنِ Indeed, Allah fulfilled His promise to you when you initially swept them away by his will. حَتَّى إِذَا فَشِلْتُمْ وَتَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ وَعَصَيْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُمْ مَا تُحِبُّونَ Then your courage weakened, and you disputed about the command and disobeyed, after Allah had brought victory within your reach. مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ Some of you were after worldly gain while others desired a heavenly reward. ثُمَّ صَرَفَكُمْ عَنْهُمْ لِيَبْتَلِيَكُمْ He denied you victory over them as a test. وَلَقَدْ عَفَى عَنْكُمْ Yet he has pardoned you. وَاللَّهُ ذُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And Allah is gracious to the believers. So here Imam Suyuti rahimahullah writes, وَلَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهُ Indeed or truly, surely, Allah fulfilled His promise to you. Then He explains what that promise is. Iyakum bin Nasri. Truly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled His promise to you in terms of victory. Meaning, at the initial stages of the Battle of Uhud, the Muslims were victorious. They had the upper hand. It seems like they were going to win. If tahusunahum taqtulunahum bi idni. When you were killing them, Right, when you were sweeping them away by his will, with his permission. So here Imam Suyuti rahimullah is highlighting that the verb تحسونهم means تقتلونهم. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely fulfilled his promise to you in terms of granting you victory when you were killing your enemy on the battlefield. So he says بِإِذْنِهِ with his permission بِإِرَادَتِهِ according to his will. حَتَّى إِذَا فَشِلْتُمْ Until your courage weakened or until you showed weakness. 
جَبُنْتُمْ عَنِ الْقِتَانِ or until you exhibited cowardice in terms of fighting. وَتَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And you disputed about the command. You disputed about the kanam. وَتَنَازَعْتُمْ You disputed with each other, meaning اِخْتَلَفْتُمْ You had a difference of opinion. You had a disagreement في الْأَمْرِ Regarding the command. Then Imam Suyuti rahmatullah highlights what the command is being referred to. Which command is being referred to? A. أمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بالمقام في صفح الجبل للرمي. So, وتنازعتم اختلفتم في الأمر. You disputed, you disagreed about the command. Which command? Meaning, the command of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to remain on top of the mountain to shoot arrows. So again, when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم arrived at Uhud, he arranged and organized the army. And he assigned a number of archers, 50 archers, to stand on Jabal al-Rumat, to stand on this mountain of archers to protect the Muslim army from being attacked from behind. So they started disputing about this. So A, Amr al-Nabi, the command of the Prophet ﷺ, bil muqami to remain fi safh al-jabal lil-ramni, to remain um, on the top of the mountain to shoot arrows. فَقَالَ بَعْضُكُمْ نَذْهَبُ فَقَدْ نُصِرَ أَصْحَابُنَا So some of you said, let's go, because our companions have been granted victory. Right? They saw that the Muslims were being victorious. Some of them already started collecting the spoils of war. So some companions, some of the archers said that, you know what? The battle's done. We're victorious. Let's go collect the spoils of war. وَبَعْضُكُمْ لَا نُخَالِفُ أَمْرَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عليه وسلم. And others said, no, we will not go against the command of the Prophet ﷺ. We will not disobey the direct command of the Prophet ﷺ. And you disobeyed. You disobeyed his command by leaving your posts, by leaving your position because of the spoils of war. مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُمُ اللَّهُ مَا تُحِبُّونَ After Allah showed you what you liked. After Allah showed you what you liked, meaning in terms of victory. So مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُمُ اللَّهُ After Allah had shown you مَا تُحِبُّونَ What you like, من النصر in terms of victory. وَجَوَابُ إِذَا دَلَّ عَلَيْهِ مَا قَبْلَهُ He says that here you have the, the, the word حَتَّى إِذَا فَشِلْتُمْ right? Until your courage weakened. Until you showed weakness and you disagreed regarding the command and then you disobeyed the command. What is the response of all of that? He says, What comes before it indicates towards A, مَنَعَكُمْ نَصْرَهُ Because all of this happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevented his victory from you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed that victory into a defeat. مِنْكُمْ مَا يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا Among you are those who want the life of this world. Some of you were after worldly gain. Among you, there were those seeking the mundane. So, minkum may yuridu dunya. Among you are those who wanted worldly things. فَتَرَكَ markaz lil ghanima. So you abandoned your positions for the spoils of war. وَمِنْكُمْ may yuridu al And among you, there were those who wanted reward in the hereafter. Among you there were those who wanted the hereafter. فَثَبَتَ bi. So they remained firm. They remained steadfast in their positions. Hatta قُتِلَ Until they were killed. Until they were martyred. كَعَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنِ جُبَيْرٍ وَأَصْحَابِهِ Like عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنِ جُبَيْرٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ وَأَصْحَابِهِ And those that remained with him on this mountain. So the Prophet ﷺ actually appointed عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنِ جُبَيْرٍ as the leader of the archers. So he was one of those who said that, no, we cannot get down yet. The Prophet ﷺ told us, no matter what's going on, do not leave your post, do not leave your position. So we're not going to go. But some of the archers mistakenly thought that, you know what, the battle's over, we can go and participate in collecting the spoils of war. ثُمَّ صَرَفَكُمْ عَنْهُمْ Then he denied you victory over them لِيَبْتَلِيَكُمْ In order to test you. 
He reversed your position against them. Right? ثُمَّ صَرَفَكُمْ عَنْهُمْ He turned your position or he turned you away from them. He says this is عَطْفٌ عَلَى جَوَابِ إِذَا المقدر. Right? This is connected to the response of إِذَا that is inferred. Meaning مَنَعَكُمْ نَصْرَهُ right? ثُمَّ صَرَفَكُمْ عَنْهُمْ رَدَّكُمْ بالهزيمة. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you back with disp- uh, defeat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you back with defeat. A al kufar anhu meaning from the non believers. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned you away from the non believers, meaning in defeat. Liyabataliyakum to test you. To try you. Liyamtahinakum right to test you. Fayadhar al mukhlisu min ghayri. So the one who was sincere would become clear from those who weren't. So the one who is sincere, yadhar, can become apparent, uh, can be shown, right? can be displayed um, in opposition to those who are not meaning the hypocrites. وَلَقَدْ عَفَى عَنْكُمْ And Allah has pardoned you. مَرْتَكَبْتُمُوهُ Allah has pardoned what you have done. وَاللَّهُ ذُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And Allah is all gracious to the believers بِالْعَفْوِ with pardon. In the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues with the topic of the battle of Uhud. So I will read the next paragraph and then translate and comment. Uzkuru if tusiduna tubiduna fil ardi hari bin wala talwuna tu arrijuna ala ahadin wa rasulu yadukum fi uhrakum a min wara ikum yakulu ilayya ibad Allah. إِلَيَّ عِبَادَ اللَّهِ فَأَثَابَكُمْ فَجَازَاكُمْ غَمَّاً بِالْهَزِيمَةِ بِغَمٍ بِسَبَبِ غَمِّكُمْ الرَّسُولَ بِالْمُخَالَفَةِ وقيل الباء بمعنى على أي مضاعفاً على غم فوت الغنيمة لكي لا متعلق بعفا أو بأثابكم فلا زائدة تحزنوا على ما فاتكم من الغنيمة ولا ما أصابكم من القتل والهزيمة والله خبير بما تعملون So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again is continuing with the topic of the battle of Uhud and he's addressing the companions إذ تسعدون ولا تلون على أحد والرسول يدعوكم في أخراكم Remember when you are running away or when you are running far away not looking at anyone while the messenger was calling to you from behind. فَأَثَابَكُمْ غَمَّا بِغَمٍ لِكَيْ لَا تَحْزَنُوا عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا مَا أَصَابَكُمْ So Allah rewarded your disobedience with distress upon distress. Now do not grieve over the victory you were denied or the injury you suffered. وَاللَّهُ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ And Allah is all aware of what you do. So here Imam Suyuti highlights that the command Uzkuru is inferred at the beginning of this verse. Because we have that particle Idh. Uzkuru Idh. Remember when. Tus'iduna. You are running far away. When you are going away. He says, Tub'iduna fil ard. You are going far away on the land. Had he been running away. So remember when you are running far away. Wala talwuna. Not looking at anyone. Not even turning to look at anyone. وَلَا تَلْوُونَ تُعَرِّجُونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ Not looking at anyone. You are running away to save your life. وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ فِي أُخْرَاكُمْ While the messenger was calling you from behind. A مِنْ وَرَائِكُمْ Meaning from behind you. يَقُولْ And according to the narrations, the Prophet ﷺ was saying, إِلَيَّ عِبَادَ اللَّهِ that come to me, O servants of God. Come to me, O servants of God. فَأَثَابَكُمْ فَجَازَاكُمْ The word athaba yuthibu means to give reward. But here it means jaza yujazi, to repay. So فَأَثَابَكُمْ Like he rewarded you, meaning فَجَازَاكُمْ He paid you. He repaid you or he awarded you غَمَّن Distress بِغَمَّن Sorrow for sorrow, right? Distress upon distress. So, فَجَازَاكُمْ غَمَّنْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awarded you, 
gave you distress, sorrow, bil hazimati, through defeat. Bighammin, because of distress or upon distress. Yani bi sababi ghammikum ur rasula bil mukhalafa. Because you caused distress and sorrow to the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi by opposing his command. When he told you to stay on the mountain, you disobeyed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has awarded you, has given you distress because of the distress you caused the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you sorrow because of the sorrow that you caused to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Waqila, it is said, al ba'u bi ma'na ala. That ghamman bi ghamman. This ba here is not sababiyya. It's not for cause. Rather it is bi ma'na ala. It means upon. Meaning we caused you distress upon distress. A mudaafan ala ghammi fawt al ghanima. We caused you multiple distress or multiplied distress uh, upon your uh, distress of losing out on the spoils of war. لِكَيْ لَا تَحْزَنُوا عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ So that you should not grieve over what you have lost. وَلَا مَا أَصَابَكُمْ Or for what you suffered. وَاللَّهُ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ And Allah is all aware of what you do. Now here Imam Musayyuti rahimullah He's highlighting how Likayla is connected to what came before it, grammatically, in terms of the sentence structure. So he says, Likayla muta'alliqun bi'afa. That this Likayla, so that, is connected to Afa. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardoned you. Why did He pardon you? So that you should not grieve over what you lost or for what you suffered. Right, so don't, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardoned you so, the, so that you don't grieve over what you have lost and you don't grieve over what you have suffered. So that's one way of understanding it. O bi athabakum. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awarded you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you distress upon distress or distress for causing the Prophet sallallahu distress. Likay la tahzanu. And here it says the lamb, فَلَا زَائِدَ The lamb is extra, grammatically. Meaning, لِكَيْ تَحْزَنُوا عَلَى مَا فَتَكُمْ So you can grieve over what you lost. And so you can grieve over what you suffered. Why? Because you caused pain to the Messenger of Allah wasallam. So he says, لِكَيْ لَا is either connected to بِعَفَا or it's connected to أَثَابَكُمْ And if it's connected to أَثَابَكُمْ then the la, likay la, the lam alif, is za'idah, it is extra. Meaning grammatically, in terms of meaning, it gives emphasis. Likay la tahzanu ala ma fatakum. So that you do not grieve, right, over what you have lost. Min al ghanima, in terms of the spoils of war. Wala ma asabakum. And so that you don't grieve for what you have suffered. Min al qatli wal hazima, in terms of loss of life, right, in terms of death. And in terms of uh, defeat, وَاللَّهُ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ And Allah is all aware of what you do. So Imam Suyuti rahimullah is highlighting that there are two ways of understanding this last portion of the verse. One way to understand it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardoned you. He overlooked your mistake and overlooked your sin and pardoned you so that you do not grieve in the future over what you lost or for what you suffered. Or it's connected to athabakum, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awarded you distress upon distress. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you distress for causing distress to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that you can grieve over what you have lost and reflect, so that you can grieve for what you've suffered. Wallahu khabirun bima ta'amaloon, and Allah is all aware of what you do. So I will now read. The next page of the Mus'haf, Tilawatan, followed by the first paragraph of the Tafsir. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Thumma anzala alaykum min ba'di al-ghamm amanatan nu'asan yagsha ta'ifatan minkum wa ta'ifah. وطائفة قد أهمتهم أنفسهم يظنون بالله غير الحق ظن الجاهلية 
يقولون هل لنا من الأمر من شيء قل إن الأمر كله لله يخفون في أنفسهم ما لا يبدون لك يقولون لو كان لنا من الأمر شيء ما قتلناها هنا قل لو كنتم في بيوتكم لبرز الذين كتب عليهم القتل إلى مضاجعهم وليبتلي الله ما في صدوركم وليمحص ما في قلوبكم والله عليم بذات الصدور إن الذين تولوا منكم يوم التقى الجمعان إنما استزلهم الشيطان ببعض ما كسبوا ولقد عفى الله عنهم إن الله غفور حليم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تكونوا كالذين كفروا وقالوا لإخوانهم وقالوا لإخوانهم إذا ضربوا في الأرض أو كانوا غزا لو كانوا عندنا ما ماتوا وما قتلوا ليجعل الله ذلك حسرة في قلوبهم والله يحيي ويميت والله بما تعملون بصير ولئن قتلتم في سبيل الله أو متتم لمغفرة من الله ورحمة خير مما يجمعون قال رحمه الله ثم أنزل عليكم من بعد الغم أمنة أمنا نعاسا بدل يغشى بالياء والتاء طائفة منكم وهم المؤمنون فكانوا يميدون تحت الحجف وتسقط السيوف منهم وطائفة قد أهمتهم أنفسهم أي حملتهم على الهم فلا رغبة لهم إلا نجاتها دون النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه فلم يناموا وهم المنافقون يظنون بالله ظنا غير الظن الحق ظن أي كظن الجاهلية حيث, التعق... حيث اعتقدوا أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قتل أو لا ينصر يقولون هل ما لنا من الأمر أي النصر الذي وعدناه من زائدة شيء قل لهم إن الأمر كله بالنصب توكيدا والرفع مبتدأ خبره لله أي القضاء له يفعل ما يشاء يخفون في أنفسهم ما لا يبدون يظهرون لك يقولون بيان لما قبله لو كان لنا من الأمر شيء ما قتلناها هنا أي لو كان الاختيار إلينا لم نخرج فلم نقتل لكن أخرجنا كرها So here again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continuing with the topic of the battle of Uhud ثم أنزل عليكم من بعد الغم أمنة نعاسة يغشى طائفة منكم وطائفة قد أهمتهم أنفسهم يظنون بالله غير الحق ظن الجاهلية Then after distress he sent down serenity in the form of drowsiness overcoming some of you while others were disturbed by evil thoughts about Allah the thoughts of pre-Islamic ignorance. يقولون هل لنا من الأمر من شيء They ask, do we have a say in the matter? قل إن الأمر كله لله Say, all matters are destined by Allah. يخفون في أنفسهم ما لا يبدون لك They conceal in their hearts what they do not reveal to you. يقولون لو كان لنا من الأمر شيء ما قتلناها هنا. They say to themselves, if we had any say in the matter, none of us would have come to die here. قل لو كنتم في بيوتكم لبرز الذين كتب عليهم القتل إلى مضاجعهم وليبتلي الله ما في صدوركم وليمحص ما في قلوبكم Wallahu alimun bidhati sudun say even if you were to remain in your homes, those among you who were destined to be killed 
would have met the same fate. Through this, Allah tests what is within you and purifies what is in your hearts, and Allah knows best what is hidden in the heart. So here Imam Suyuti rahimullah he writes, ثُمَّ أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ الْغَمِّ أَمَنَتَا Then, after distress, he sent down serenity. Right? أَمَنَةً أَمْنًا Peace, security, safety, tranquility, serenity. These are all words that can be used to translate this meaning of أَمَنَةً. Right? So, ثُمَّ أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ الْغَمْ Right? Then, after the distress, after the sorrow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down upon you amanatan, tranquility, serenity, safety, security, amnan. So Imam Suyuti says amanatan here means amnan, which is safety or security. Then nu'asan, what was that serenity, what was that safety, security, that tranquility? Nu'asan, drowsiness. He says badanun. Grammatically speaking, the word nu'asan is the badal of amanatan. It's the substitute, it's the replacement for the word amanatan. Yani thumma anzala alaykum min ba'd al ghammi nu'asan. That after the distress, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down upon you drowsiness. Right? Yaghsha ta'ifatan minkum. Overtaking a group of you. Overcoming or covering a group amongst you. So yaghsha bil ya'i wa ta. Imam Sayyuti rahimullah is highlighting that the verb yaghsha can be read with a ya or with a ta. Yani yaghsha or taghsha. Ta'ifatan minkum. So this drowsiness, this slumber, overcame a group of you. Wahumul mu'minun. And they were the believers. Yani this tranquility, this serenity, this drowsiness in sleep, it descended upon the true believers during the battle of Uhud. Fakanu yamiduna تحت الحجف that they would be you know like weary and drowsy and they would be leaning uh, out of drowsiness beneath their shields وتسقط الصيوف منهم and their swords would actually fall from their hands because of this drowsiness because of this sleep and slumber or right? because of this tranquility this serenity وطائفة قد أهمتهم أنفسهم another group was worrying about their own selves. And he says, A hamalatum alan ham. Yani their own selves caused them to be worried about themselves. Fala rahbata lahum illa najatuha duna nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ashabihi falam yanamu. Meaning they had no desire except for their own saving. They didn't care about anything else except for saving themselves. And not the Prophet ﷺ and his companions, فَلَمْ يَنَامُوا So they didn't sleep. They were not overcome with this amanatan. They were not overcome with this nu'asan. Because they were the hypocrites. وَهُمُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ And they are the hypocrites. يَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ غَيْرَ الْحَقِّ ظَنَّ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ Harboring thoughts about Allah that were untrue. Thoughts of ignorance. So يَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ Believing about Allah or thinking about Allah, ظنن, thoughts, غير الظن الحق, untrue thoughts, ظن الجاهلية, similar to the thoughts of ignorance. حيث اعتقدوا أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قتل أو لا ينصروا, because they believed that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was killed or that he would not be given victory and help. يقولون, they say, meaning the hypocrites say. هل لنا من الأمر من شيء؟ هل لنا من الأمر من شيء؟ Is there anything in our hands? Do we have any control? Do we have any say in the matter? So يقولون the hypocrite said هل ما لنا من الأمر أي النصر الذي وعدناه من زائدة شيء؟ That they would say ما لنا we don't have من الأمر in terms of the affair meaning victory that we had been promised. Min shay, he says za'idah grammatically, but it's for emphasis. Meaning, do we have any say in the matter of the victory that was promised to us? Right? Do we have any control over this? Do we have any say in this? Um, uh, is there anything in our control? Qul lahum, say to them, O Prophet sallallahu inna al-amra kullahu lillah. Right? The whole thing belongs to Allah. 
all matters belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, قُلْ لَهُمْ Say to them, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ الْأَمْرَ كُلَّهُ right, All of the affairs, لِلَّهِ Belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he highlights a grammatical point. That, كُلَّهُ بِالنَّصْبِ If it is read with nasab, if it's in the state of nasab, tawkidan. It's serving the role of emphasis. It's emphasizing the word al-amra. And he qul, inna al-amra kullahu. Right, indeed, truly, all affairs, lillah, belong to Allah. Wa raf'u, if we read it kulluhu, with the state of raf'a, with a dhamma on the dam, then it's a mubtada. It's the subject, wa khabruhu, and its khabr, its predicate is lillah. And he qul lahum, say to them, inna al-amra, truly the affairs, kulluhu lillah. All of it belong to Allah. A. al lahu. Decree belongs to Allah. Judgment belongs to Allah. Right? The divine decree belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yaf'alu ma yasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does as He wills. Yukhfuna fi anfusihim ma la yubduna lak. They conceal in their hearts. Right? They conceal in their hearts. What they do not reveal to you. So, yukhfuna fi anfusihim. They hide, they conceal within themselves, meaning they conceal in their hearts. Ma la yubdun. That which they don't expose, yudhirun, reveal, lak to you. Yaqulun, bayanun lima qablahu. Right, yaqulun, they say, and this is explaining what came before, meaning what they conceal in their hearts. Law kana lana min al amri shay'um, ma qutilna ha huna. If we had any say in the matter, none of us would have come to die here. If we had any say in the matter, we would not have been killed here on the battlefield of Uhud. Right? So, uh, A. الْإِخْتِيَارُ إِلَيْنَا If the choice was ours, لَمْ نَخْرُجْ We would not have come out. فَلَمْ نُقْتَلْ So we would not have been killed. لَكِنْ أُخْرِجْنَا كُرْهًا But we were forced to come out. We were forced to come out against our will. So Imam Suyuti continues now um, in the next paragraph of the tafsir. So I will read the paragraph first and then we will go through it. قُلْ لَهُمْ لَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ وَفِيكُمْ مَنْ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْقَتْلَ لَبَرَزَ خَرَجَ الَّذِينَ كُتِبَ قُضِيَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقَتْلُ مِنْكُمْ إِلَى مَضَاجِعِهِمْ مَصَارِعِهِمْ فَيُقْتَلُوا وَلَمْ يُنْجِهِمْ قُعُودُهُمْ لِأَنَّ قَضَاءَهُ تَعَالَى كَائِنٌ لَا مُحَالَى وَفُعِلَ مَا فُعِلَ بِأُحُدٍ لِيَبْتَلِيَ يَخْتَبِرَ اللَّهُ مَا فِي صُدُورِكُمْ قُلُوبِكُمْ مِنَ الْإِخْلَاصِ وَالنِّفَاقِ وَلِيُمَحِّصَ يَمِيزَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ بِمَا فِي الْقُلُوبِ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٌ وَإِنَّمَا يَبْتَلِي لِيُظْهِرَ لِلنَّاسِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَوَلَّوْا مِنْكُمْ عَنِ الْقِتَالِ يَوْمَ الْتَقَى الْجَمْعَانِ جَمْعُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَجَمْعُ الْكَافِرِينَ بِأُحُدٍ وَهُمُ الْمُسْلِمُونَ إِلَّا اثْنَيْ عَشَرَ رَجُلًا إِنَّمَا اسْتَزَلَّهُمْ أَزَلَّهُمْ الشَّيْطَانُ بِوَسْوَسَتِهِ بِبَعْضِ مَا كَسَبُوا مِنَ الذُّنُوبِ وَهُوَ مُخَالَفَةُ أَمْرِ الرَّسُولِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَلَقَدْ عَفَا اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ حَلِيمٌ لَا يُعَجِّلُ عَلَى الْعُصَاتِ So here we are continuing with the same verse. Verse number 154. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet ﷺ قُلْ لَهُمْ Say to them لَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ لَبَرَزَ الَّذِينَ كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقَتْلُ إِلَى مَضَاجِعِهِمْ even if you were to remain in your homes, those among you who were destined to be killed would have met the same faith. If you were in your homes, those destined to be killed would have come out all the way to their final resting places. So, قُلْ لَهُمْ Say to them, لَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ If you were in your homes, وَفِيكُمْ مَنْ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْقَتْلَ And among you, there were those that Allah decreed for them to be killed. And He katab Allahu alayhi al-qatla. Allah decided, Allah decreed and destined for them to be killed. La baraza kharaja. 
they would come out. الَّذِينَ كُتِبَ قُضِيَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقَتْلُ Those upon whom death was written. Those who were destined to die would have come out. إِلَى مَضَاجِعِهِمْ To their final resting places. مَصَارِعِهِمْ right? مَصَارِعِ is the place of being killed. To their spots of killing. right? To their places of being killed. فَيُقْتَلُوا And they would be killed. Because there's nothing that can stop the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah decides a matter, it's going to happen without a doubt. No matter what you try to do, you cannot escape it. Right? وَلَمْ يُنْجِهِمْ قُعُودُهُمْ And them sitting and remaining in their homes would not have saved them. لِأَنَّ قَضَاءَهُ تَعَالَى كَائِنٌ لَا مُحَالَى Because the divine decree and the divine decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala كَائِنٌ is going to happen لَا مُحَالَى without a doubt. وَفُعِلَ مَا فُعِلَ بِأُحُدٍ And whatever was done was done during Uhud. Right. فُعِلَ مَا فُعِلَ بِأُحُد Whatever was done was done in Uhud. Why? لِيَبْتَلِيَ اللَّهُ مَا فِي صُدُورِكُمْ So that Allah could test what is within your hearts. Right. All this was done so that Allah may test your inner qualities. لِيَبْتَلِيَ يَمِيزَ Or يَخْتَبِرَ اللَّهُ مَا فِي صُدُورِكُمْ so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could test what is in your hearts. قُلُوبِكُمْ مِنَ الْإِخْلَاصِ nifaq. What is in your hearts in terms of sincerity or hypocrisy? وَلِيُمَحِصَ And also to purify. Yamiza distinguish. مَا فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ What is in your heart. And to purify what is in your hearts. وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing of what is in people's hearts. And بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ What is in people's chest, meaning in their hearts. بِمَا فِي الْقُلُوبِ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٌ Nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّمَا يَبْتَنِي لِيُظْهِرَ لِلنَّاسِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests people so that He can reveal it to mankind. Because Allah already knows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows what is inside of people's hearts. So he tests them in order to make that apparent, in order to reveal it to other human beings, in order to make it known. Surely those of you who turn back on the day when the two troops faced each other, Satan had but made them slip for some of their deeds. Of course, Allah has forgiven them. Certainly, Allah is most forgiving, very forbearing. So, inna al-ladina tawallu, right? Inna al-ladina tawallu binkum. Truly, those who fled on the day yom al-taqal jama'an, on the day when the two armies met. So, inna al-ladina tawallu minkum an al-qital. Those who turned away from fighting. يَوْمَ الْتَقَلْ jamaan, When the two, the day the two parties met. Which two parties? جَمْعُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَجَمْعُ الْكَافِرِينَ بِأُحُدٍ Right, the army of the believers and the army of the non-believers at Uhud. وَهُمُ الْمُسْلِمُونَ Right, and this is referring to الْمُسْلِمُونَ Right, this is referring to the Muslims. إِلَّا ثْنَيْ عَشَرَ رَجُولًا Except for about 12 companions. Who did not turn away, who did not oppose the Prophet and run away. And the, the riwayat, the narrations mention other numbers as well. And there was a there was a good group of Muslims that remained firm and steadfast and were there to protect the Prophet in his time of need. Right? shaytan. Satan, or they were made to slip by shaytan. Shaytan caused them to slip. Azallahumu shaytan. Right, shaitan is the one that made them slip and make a mistake. Bi waswasitihi, right, with his whispers. Bi baadi ma kasabu, because of some of what they earned, because of some of their deeds, min al zunub, right, because of some of what they earned in terms of their sins. Wa huwa muqalafa tu amr al rasul, and that was them opposing and disobeying the command of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to not leave Jabal al Rumat. Wa la qad afa Allah wa anhum. And surely Allah has pardoned them. Inna Allah ghafurun lil mu'minin. Truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiving 
for the believers, حَلِيمٌ Most forbearing, very forbearing. لَا يُعَجِّلُ عَلَى الْعُصَاتِ He doesn't hasten punishment upon the disobedient. So I'll read the next paragraph as well. قَالَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أي المنافقين وقالوا لإخوانهم أي في شأنهم إذا ضربوا سافروا في الأرض فماتوا أو كانوا غزا جمع غاز فقتلوا لو كانوا عندنا ما ماتوا وما قتلوا أي لا تقولوا كقولهم ليجعل الله ذلك القول في عاقبة أمرهم حسرة في قلوبهم والله يحيي ويميت فلا يمنع عن الموت قعود والله بما تعملون بالتاء والياء بصير فيجازيكم به ولئن لا مقسم قتلتم في سبيل الله أي الجهاد أو متتم بضم الميم وكسرها من مات يموت ويمات أي أتاكم الموت فيه لمغفرة كائنة من الله لذنوبكم ورحمة منه لكم على ذلك واللام ومدخولها جواب القسم وهو في موضع الفعل مبتدأ خبره خير مما تجمعون من الدنيا بالتاء والياء ولئن لا مقسم متم بالوجهين أو قتلتم في الجهاد أو غيره لإلى الله لا غيره تحشرون في الآخرة فيجازيكم So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again is continuing now uh, with the topic of the battle of Uhud. So as you can see there's several ayat of Surah Ali Ibran that deal with Uhud because it was such an important occasion, because it was such an instructive um, event that happened in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and his companions radiallahu anhu. And that is why it is so important for us to study it, to study its history, its causes. You know, what led up to the Battle of Uhud, what happened during the Battle of Uhud, and what happened afterwards. And once we have that full picture in studying Uhud, then we are able to extract all of the lessons and guidance and reminders that is found in these particular verses. So here in verse 156, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the believers. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la takunu kalladheena kafaru. That, O oh, you who believe, don't be like those who disbelieved. وَقَالُوا لِإِخْوَانِهِمْ إِذَا ضَرَبُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ أَوْ كَانُوا غُزَّلْ لَوْ كَانُوا عِنْدَنَا مَا مَاتُوا وَمَا قُتِلُوا That don't be like those who disbelieved and said about their brethren while they traveled on the earth or had to fight. Had they been with us, they would not have died, nor would they have been killed. لِيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ حَسْرَةً فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ The result is that Allah makes it a remorse resting in their hearts. Wallahu yuhi wa yumit. Allah gives life and gives death. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basil. And Allah is all watchful of what you do. So Imam Suyuti rahimahullah writes, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. O you who have believed. And this address is initially to the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La takunu kal ladheena kafaru. Don't be like the ones who have disbelieved. Ay al munafiqeen. In this context, it was referring to the hypocrites. That, O oh, you who have believed, O oh, people of Iman, don't be like those who have disbelieved, meaning the hypocrites. Waqalu li ikhwanihim. And they said to their brethren, they said to their brothers, Ay fi sha'nihim. Right? They said regarding them, Ida darabu safaru fil ard. When they traveled across the land when they traveled throughout the land فَمَاتُوا and passed away أو كانوا غزا, or they were engaged in battle they were warriors he says غزن is the plural of the word غازن meaning or they were warriors فقتلوا and they were killed what did they say to them or what did they say about them لو كانوا عندنا ما ماتوا وما قتلوا if they were with us Meaning if they stayed behind with us at home and did not participate in the battle or they didn't travel to engage in battle, ma matu. They would not have died, wa ma qutilu, they would not have been killed. A la taqulu ka Allah is telling the believers, don't say something similar to that. 
right? Don't don't copy their statement. لِيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ حَسْرَةً فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah will make that a remorse in their heart. Allah makes such thinking a cause of agony in their hearts. So لِيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ الْقَوْلَ فِي عَاقِبَةِ أَمْرِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make that statement of theirs at the end of their affair حَسْرَةً فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ A source of agony and remorse in their hearts. وَاللَّهُ يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتِ and Allah is the one who gives life and gives death. فَلَا يَمْنَعُ عَنِ الْمَوْتِ قُعُودٌ So sitting back and remaining back in one's home will not prevent death. Because death will come to you wherever you are if it's written for you. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ And Allah is all-seeing of what you do. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ He says بِالتَّاءِ وَالْيَا There are two qira'a here. There are two recitations. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ with a ta And وَاللَّهُ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ with a ya. Basirun, all watchful, all seeing. Fayujazi kumbi, so he will repay you for it. He will repay you for it. Wala in kutiltum fi sabil in lahi o mutum, la marfira tum in Allahi wa rahmatun khayrum in my yajmaun. If you are killed in the way of Allah or die, the forgiveness from Allah and the mercy is far better than what they accumulate. Wala in la muqasmin. Imam Suyuti rahimullah highlights that the lamb in front of in is for qasam. It's an oath. Wallahi. Right? Wallahi in qutiltum fi sabilillah. By Allah, if you are killed in the way of Allah, a al jihad meaning in jihad, o muttum, or you pass away. He says, bi dhammil meem wa kasriha. We can recite muttum with a dhamma on the meem, or we can recite it with a kasra on the meem, mittum. Min. Mata yamutu. Now he's highlighting some morphology here, some sarf, that the verb is mata yamutu, or it's mata yamatu. Ala wazni khafa yakhafu. So it could be wala immuttum, o wala immittum. And they both mean the same thing, if you die. A atakumul mautu fihi. That death comes to you in the path of Allah. La maghfiratun kainatun min Allah. Then surely mercy or forgiveness that comes from Allah. لِذُنُوبِكُمْ for your sins وَرَحْمَةٌ مِنْهُ لَكُمْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ And the mercy of Allah, minhu from Him, for you, upon that وَاللَّامُ وَمَدْخُلُهَا جَوَابُ الْقَسَمْ And he's saying this لَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِنَ اللَّهُ وَرَحْمَةٌ This is the response of the oath وَهُوَ فِي مَوْضِعِ الْفَعْلِ مُبْتَدَأٌ Right, this is like taking the place of a verb and it serves as the subject خَبُرُهُ and its predicate خَيْرٌ مِمَّا تَجْمَعُونَ the forgiveness and mercy you receive for being killed or passing away in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far better than what they accumulate min dunya in terms of worldly possessions. This forgiveness from Allah and this mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far better than whatever they may accumulate in terms of worldly possessions, in terms of material possessions. And he says, bitta'i wal ya. يعني خير مما تجمعون ودتا أن خير مما يجمعون ودايا ولا إمتم أو قتلتم لا إن الله تحشرون. Right, if you die or get killed, it is towards Allah that you will be gathered. So ولا إن لا مقسم. Again, he's highlighting that the lam is for an oath. والله إن متم. By Allah, if you die, بالوجهين. Again, it's متم أو متم. It can be recited both ways. أو قتلتم or you're killed في الجهاد أو غيره لا إن الله لا غيره then to Allah only تحشرون you'll be gathered في الآخرة in the hereafter فيجازيكم and he will repay you if you do good you'll get repaid with good if you do bad then Allah سبحانه وتعالى through his infinite justice may hold you accountable so I will now recite the next page of the Mus'haf تلاوةً followed by the first paragraph of the tafsir. وَلَئِن مُتُّمْ أَوْ قُتِلْتُمْ لَإِنَ اللَّهِ تُحْشَرُونَ فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَاعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ 
إن الله يحب المتوكلين إن ينصركم الله فلا غالب لكم وإن يخذلكم فمن ذا الذي ينصركم من بعده وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون وما كان لنبي أن يغل ومن يغل يأت بما غل يوم القيامة ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون أفمن اتبع رضوان الله كمن باء بسخط من الله ومأواه جهنم وبئس المصير هم درجات عند الله والله بصير بما يعملون لقد من الله على المؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم رسولا من أنفسهم يتلو عليهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين أولما أصابتكم مصيبة قد أصبتم مثليها قلتم أن هذا قل هو من عند أنفسكم إن الله على كل شيء قدير قال رحمه الله فبما ما زائدة رحمة من الله لنت يا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم لهم أي سهلت أخلاقك إذا خالفوك سهلت أخلاقك إذ خالفوك ولو كنت فضا سيء الخلق غليظ القلب جافيا فأغلظت لهم لنفضوا تفرقوا من حولك فاعفوا تجاوز عنهم ما أتوه واستغفر لهم ذنبهم حتى أغفر لهم وشاورهم استخرج آراءهم في الأمر أي شأنك من الحرب وغيره تطيبا لقلوبهم وليستن بك وليستن بك وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم كثير المشاورة لهم فإذا عزمت على إمضاء ما تريد بعد المشاورة فتوكل على الله ثق به لا بالمشاورة إن الله يحب المتوكلين عليه إن ينصركم الله يعنكم على عدوكم كيوم بدر فلا غالب لكم وإن يخذلكم يترك نصركم كيوم أحد فمن ذا الذي ينصركم من بعد أي بعد خذلان أي لا ناصر لكم وعلى الله لا غيره فليتوكل فليتوكل ليثق المؤمنون نعم So in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now speaking about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the attitude he had towards his companions, particularly those who disobeyed him during the battle of Uhud, which led to an apparent defeat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It is out of Allah's mercy that you have been lenient with them. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ Had you been cruel or hard-hearted, they would have certainly abandoned you. فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ So pardon them. Ask Allah's forgiveness for them. وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And consult with them regarding affairs. فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Once you make a decision, place your trust in Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ Truly Allah loves those who trust Him. Naam. So here Imam Suyuti says, Fabima ma zaidatun. Imam Suyuti highlights that the ma here is extra, but again extra grammatically. In terms of grammatical structure or grammatical placement, it's extra. You could have just said, Fabi rahmatin. But the ma here is for tawkid. It adds emphasis. It adds it adds more meaning. So Fabima Rahmatin min Allah lintanahum. Right? It is out of Allah's mercy. That you have been lenient with them. Right? So because of Allah or because of mercy from Allah, Linta ya Muhammadu lahum. That O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have been lenient with them. You have been gentle and kind with them. You have been soft with them. A sahalta akhlaqak. 
you made your character, you made your behavior soft with them. إِذْ خالفوك, When they disobeyed you. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا If you were cruel, if you had been rough, فَضًّا سَيِّئَ الْخُلُقِ If you had bad manners with them or bad character with them. غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ Hard-hearted, جَافِيًا Like, you know, rough. فَأَغْلَفْتَ لَهُمْ And you were um, rough with them, hard-hearted with them. لَنْ فَضُّوا تَفَرَّقُوا مِنْ حَوْلِكِ they would have dispersed from around you. They would have abandoned you. فَعْفُ تَجَاوَزْ عَنْهُمْ مَا أَتَوْهُ So فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ Pardon them. I overlook what they have done. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ And seek forgiveness for them. ذَنْبَهُمْ Their sin حَتَّى أَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ So that I can forgive them. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet وسلم, that seek forgiveness for them so that I can forgive them. وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ استخرج آرَاءَهُمْ Right, get their opinions فِي الْأَمْرِ Regarding affairs أي شأنك Right, your affairs من الحرب وغيره In terms of war and even other than that And that is why this concept of المشاورة Of consultation Is such an important concept That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet sallam, That you should consult your companions And because of that it says, وَكَانَ صَاصًا كَثِيرًا مُشَاوَرَ لَهُمْ That the Prophet ﷺ would consult his companions often. Yani, so, تَطْيِبًا لِقُلُوبِهِمْ Consult them in your affairs in order to soften their hearts. وَلْيُسْتَنَّ بِكْ And so that you could be followed in this. That if you establish this practice of mutual consultation, then the companions and those that come after them will follow that. And they will follow your sunnah and your guidance. وَكَانَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ كَثِيرَ الْمُشَاوَرَةِ لَهُمْ And the Prophet ﷺ used to consult with them frequently. فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ عَلَىٰ إِمْضَاءِ مَا تُرِيدُ And once you have made a firm resolution to do what you intend, بَعْدَ الْمُشَاوَرَةِ After the consultation. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even Imam Nusuyuti rahimullah, He is giving us the process of making decisions. That first you do mushawara. Right, first you do consultation, and after consultation, then you make a firm decision and a firm resolution to do that thing. فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ And after you make your decision, then place your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثِقْ بِهِ Depend upon Allah, rely upon Allah. لا بالمشاورة Not on the consultation. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ Truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who place their trust in Him. إِنْ يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهِ فَلَا غَارِبَ لَكُمْ If Allah helps you, no one can defeat you. وَإِنْ يَخْذُلْكُمْ But if He denies you, if He abandons you, فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِي Then who else can help you? If He abandons you, then who is there to help you after that? وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ So in Allah, the believers should place their trust. So in Allah, let the believers put their trust. So, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you, يُعِنْكُمْ عَلَىٰ عَدُوِّكُمْ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you and assists you against your enemies, كَيَوْمِ بَدْرٍ Just like the day of Badr. Just like during the battle of Badr, فَلَا غَارِبَ لَكُمْ Then there's no one that can defeat you. وَإِنْ يَخْذُلْكُمْ But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abandons you, يَتْرُكْ نَصْرَكُمْ He leaves assisting you and helping you, كَيَوْمِ أُحُدْ Like the day of Uhud, during the battle of Uhud. فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ Then who is there to help you after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? أي بعد خذلاني right? After Allah gives you the setback. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abandons you, who is there to help you? أي لا ناصر لكم You have no one to help you. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ لَا غَيْرِهِ So upon Allah فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The believers should place their trust in Allah and Allah alone. Right? وَعَلَى اللَّهِ لَا غَيْرِهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلْ لِيَثِقْ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ So this is a good place for us to stop because we're just about out of time. Alhamdulillah, we have reached till the end of verse number 160. And tomorrow we'll pick up with verse number 161. And again, I encourage everyone to read up on the battle of Uhud. That, you know, read the history from a book of Sirah. Um, I had recommended two books earlier. One is by Dr. Ali 
As-Sallabi, I believe in English is called the Noble Life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or um, a seerah uh, by a Sheikh Abu Al-Hasan Ali and nadwi Rahimahullah. Both of these are excellent resources. Um, look up the Battle of Badr and it will help you um, extract and understand these verses a lot better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this small effort of ours. May He place it on our scale of good deeds on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq and the ability to continue and uh, our journey through Tafsirul Jalalain and allow us to complete it with goodness. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this journey easy for us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it a means of us increasing our love and understanding of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وصلى الله على نبينا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته